Hey guys, let me know what you think by liking and commenting, and it really helps me and this channel out when you subscribe, so please click that button. Thanks a bunch! All right, everyone, these grab bag sessions generally exist because when I buy locomotives, I have to actually go and see if they work and try to fix them if they don't. So I figured that I would just bring you along and I hope you enjoy it. And here we go. First, we have this, which is a, uh, it's a Deutsche Bahn. Uh, yeah, this is a V221, so it's part of the V200 series, I think. So we're dual, yeah. He's actually had two prime movers in them, and I will show you the whole set this came from. It's pretty cool. Um, something's loose in there. All right, everyone, here's that full set. It is a nice Lima. Actually, it came with this catalog on top of that. All the cool stuff that Lima made. Granted, it wasn't necessarily the best quality, but it was pretty fun, I think. Let's see, I'm not sure if this particular product is in there. I mean, Lima's kind of the Bachman of Europe. Yep, very nice. It's actually a very nice locomotive. I think Marklin is coming out with that same locomotive this year. Here is the set. It comes with these four carriages. A sleeping wagon, a baggage car, and... Very nice. They actually have interiors too, which is a nice touch. Very, very nice. Compartments. with track and transformer but it's not gonna work very well here since it's 220 volts pretty neat anyway this is well it doesn't matter to me because I can't use that here anyway nor would I so there you go Pretty nifty, nifty pack. It's nice shape though overall, just whatever is loose in there. It's gonna be the weight. Yeah, it's definitely the weight from down here. So let's see, how does this come apart? All right, well, I'm not too worried about it right now. There's a loose weight in it and I will Fix that in just a moment when I can see a little bit better. It's, let's see if I can do this. It's actually hard to do this through the camera, although I am getting better at it, I think. The problem is I tore my nails, so I don't have as many. Okay. No, oh, I had it and I lost it. No, there we go. Okay. Let's see, wait, that's come free. So this is a typical Lima ring field motor. They're reliable, but they're noisy. Goodness, they're noisy. All right. So, hmm, just. I wonder, it doesn't really fit in there. That's probably why it rolled all over the place. Let's just see if it works. 
Now, if you want to look, I actually have one of these under my dual power or dual um, prime mover video where I start all of them up. I actually have one of these, so if you want to see it, let's see it. Um, it's trying. Probably could use a little lubrication. Come back to life. Okay, you know what? Let's do a couple of things here first. I will. Just a smidge. Probably should have used the light oil, but that's okay. This should penetrate nonetheless, and we will add a smidge of Teflon lubricant just to literally grease the gears a little bit. If I can be a little tiny. Okay. And for this, hmm, that doesn't sit in there better. Let's grab some double-sided tape. Let's grab the really strong variety here. And where's my scissors? This isn't a very sophisticated set, but and what's interesting is I'll show you the entire set in a minute, but it comes with a 220 volt transformer. I'm not sure how that got here to the United States. So good luck using that if you ever want to actually put this set as it was. All right, this is, always takes me forever, so hang on a second. There we go. Let's just stick this down in there with that double-sided tape. This does not have a headlight. I don't think it matters. Which, well, actually it does. Cab one is this way. So we'll put her on here. and we'll run this a little bit. traction tires they just need to be replaced so yeah not bad now that weight's not flying around in there really like this locomotive in real life I think they still run them or excursions but I actually have again if you look at my uh, dual um, prime mover video there's one of these it's the uh, blue and tan the Rhine gold but it's the same locomotive pretty much so Pretty neat. Well, I will show you the whole thing. So give me one second. 
Okay, these ones I'm actually going to show you sort of <clears throat> both at the same time because they're kind of the same locomotive. Um, and they are different <laughs> interpretations of what is known as a Swiss Express. And if you look, um, this is right, there's only pantographs on one side. And they were designed, I can't remember what cities they were designed to run between. <clears throat> but these are two different interpretations. Hag is a... <clears throat> Excuse me. Cut that out. Hag is a Swiss company and they are known for having really expensive but very durable models. Let's see, pull this out of here. Let's see how absolutely nice that is. It's their bodies are always metal. Because I've always seen, I've never seen a hag that's not metal. So here it is, it's Swiss Express. They always oriented these one way, so the side with the pantograph was always going towards one city, and then they would have a cab car and go the other way. I actually have a consist to go along with this, so I'm finally happy to find these. These are very difficult. A few companies have made them over the years. Um, Rocco has been the latest one, and Hag, but they're both very hard to find. Both very, very hard to find, and I think the Hag one is probably a little more sought after in some way, um, just because it's a hag and they're already expensive to begin with. They're kind of collector's pieces in a way. I notice the pantograph switch here is broken on mine, but you should still be able to go in there and use the pantograph. So very, very nice. There's a couple blemishes, but that's not surprising. This thing's probably maybe from the 80s or 90s, if not older. Hag, um, has a tendency to use a pancake style motor, and I think that's what we have here. But they're very, very nice nonetheless, and they're just really solid and durable. Let's see, this is DC, right? Yeah. To be careful with Hag because they make AC that run Marklin also. You don't want to put the Marklin one down on a DC track. Oh, it's very nice. They run like, well, they're Swiss, so let's see, it has headlights. Can't see. Really, really nice. They also have this kind of nice hum to them. They're always built in a way. They're a little bit a prototypical because they're always built a little more strongly. If you look at these grab irons that are a little thicker than they need to be, um, it's just a really well-made piece, though. So I'm happy to finally have one of these. These are really rare. They're difficult to find, especially here in the United States. So I'm happy to have picked one up. There's no cab details, uh, only the most recent HAG. So I don't, I don't know if HAG is an acronym or if you know, it means something different in German or whatever, but I'm not sure where the name of that company comes from, but very, very nice. Okay, the second interpretation of this very same locomotive is actually kind of not a true interpretation. It's at least this one's marketed by PlayArt. The problem with PlayArt is it was, it's a bizarre company, right? I know they bought a lot of stuff from Lima and they used a lot of other manufacturers. So this is most likely a Lima, I think, even though it's PlayArt. And it'll be the same thing. It'll be the same Swiss Express, but most likely they had another locomotive at it had uh, work as a stand-in. So let's see, let me get rid of this stuff here. And so that's what happened here. It has a nice pantograph. I don't know if it's operative, but this looks to be a Swiss AE66 or something like that. It's not the same as the correct, um, the HAG is correct. It has um, Bobo wheels, whereas this one has Coco. Let's see if it'll stay down there. But it's an interesting talking piece. I don't know, just in terms of how easy these are to convert to DCC, it looks like it has a pretty big motor in there. So it probably takes up some amperage, but probably not over two amps, maybe not one and a half. I'll have to find the stall speed of it. It does have the European style latch couplings. Um, so it's a pretty, pretty neat model. But let's see if it says who it's actually made by. Well, PlayArt is claiming it, and they say they're making it in Hong Kong, but I know if you go look up this locomotive, there'll be more Lima ones that are exactly the same. 
So I don't know who's telling the truth here. Is Play Art telling the truth and they really made this? Or is this really a Lima? I'm just not sure. Either way, it's the same. It's missing one of the bumpers, but that's no problem. Those are pretty easy to get. Let's see if it works. Oh, actually, I bumpers right there. It dropped it. So it looks like it works. It's just a little hesitant. It's like the front truck has something funky going on with it. I wonder if one of the wheels is misaligned or something's misaligned. You know, the whole thing is just sort of misaligned. It's because of that latch coupler. Let's try that again. That's it is noisy. If it has the Lima motor in it, that's not surprising. It'll be the same one that's in that other one if it's a, a ring filled motor. But it's, it's not the worst thing in the world. I don't know if I'll use it for anything other than just as a collector's piece, just because it's just so interesting. Probably could use some oil. Let's see how easy this shell is to remove, and we can take a look at it here. There we go. Oh, it actually either has a power conversion or this is... You know what? I've seen these in other play arts and those, um, those bullet trains that they offer. So that's what we have here is this motor. I don't know how easy it is to repower these. It sure is. The whole gear set is noisy though. And I doubt even lubricating them. They look really dry. I doubt even lubricating them will help because uh, there's probably just a lot of slop. I'm trying to get enough within the teeth that they'll start, sp it'll start spreading around. Thing in the world. Maybe Play Art really did make this. I like the glob of blue. It's a nice touch. It's a headlight. A tail light. That's okay. It's going to be hard to complain. I don't know if I'm going to actually convert this. I have converted a Play Art before. And it's not that difficult, but you just can't really you know, can't really tone down the noise. So it's an interesting uh, piece to find. Like I said, I normally find these in Lima, but when I found one in play art, I sort of had to get it because that's more rare to find them in play art. Uh, play art's just sort of a rare company to find things from in this country in a lot of ways anyway. Let's see, is that, I think that's fully engaged. There we go. So, well, anyway, interesting conversation piece. I don't know if it's worth converting. I got it pretty cheap, so I'm not really worried about it. Um, and I certainly don't think <laughs> I'll use this on my layout on a regular basis, but who knows? Um, definitely since I have the HAG um, Swiss Express, I'll probably use that instead. But very interesting piece. There's no doubt about it. This one is a really interesting find, particularly in the United States, where you don't find a lot from Good Sold. In fact, it is a company I really hadn't heard much about because they just they don't seem to have any presence here in the United States. But it's German, and they make German locomotives. So does it have any cab details? Yes, it has cab interior details. This is a V200. It is a mainstay of sort of X. Let's slice this. They have an uh, ex uh, Warsaw Pact Iron Curtain states. Um, and, you know, looking at the history, the way the Soviet Union did it, 
is they didn't just let anybody make locomotives. They assigned certain countries to make certain locomotives. And these were East German. So I, I have several of them actually, but all the other ones I have are in Soviet um, livery. This is, I don't have one in DR. That's what this one is. Uh, but again, this company, Goetzel, I don't know much about them, but they're certainly popular in Europe. Why they're not more popular here, why they never tried to have any kind of presence here, I'm not sure. Maybe they're just too small and just like, forget it. It's not worth our time to try to get anything done here. So let's see. Now, one thing, if you've heard one of these, if you look up one of these on YouTube and you listen to them, it is a very noisy, kind of clanky, hmm, it just sort of sits on there. It doesn't really, well, you can see the interior, I guess, while we're at it. It has a eight pin decoder plug and you know, a lot of hand done wiring. Very interesting. Oh, there's the cab detail. Very interesting. I'm just not sure why the cab doesn't like sit down on there a little more solidly. I don't know if it should have screws or something to that effect. But either way, it doesn't really matter. It's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty labor intensive. Actually, it's, they have really nice cab details here. Look even better if you painted them. So that's pretty cool. All right. That on the track so it'll be good to have an actual East German one of these since I don't have one like I said all mine are Soviet and nothing it's always a bad sign I got nothing it's not even trying okay well we're off to a great start Reverse lamps and front lamps. That's pretty nifty. And it's pretty quiet too. I think the fact that I use Easy Track makes things sound a little louder than they really are because it's hollow underneath there. But you can see the, yeah, not bad at all. It has a top light. Or is it gonna be a cab light now? That'll be top. Yeah, it's actually a pretty nice unit. It's just again, not quite sure why this doesn't get on there really solidly. No, it's not like a really solid fit. It lifts up, sorry, now you can't see this. Okay, well, I'm not sure why it just doesn't quite fit super solidly on here. It acts like it wants to. I mean, it certainly fits, but it just, it's like that last, I mean, does it have like a screw under here? No. I just don't know why it's, yeah, I guess it's no matter. It doesn't matter. It's like, gotta be careful. I always try to hold from the bottom underneath anyway, so I guess that really doesn't matter. But yeah, either way, pretty nifty. It's not super solid, but that's okay. No matter. There you go. Deutsche Reichsbahn V200, the, kind of the mainstay. It'd almost be like the SD40 of 
the Eastern Bloc, I think. So there you have that. Okay, the last one today is this, it's a Rocco Ice uh, Inner City Express, and I have the whole set, I'll show you the whole set. And here's the Ice 2 set. Like I said, it seems like Ice 1 has two of these cars, one on each side, maybe they're slightly different. But the difference between Ice 2 is this is the other end car, and I've got to find the nose cone for it. Except I'm missing the nose cone off of one. So I have it on order. Hopefully they'll get it to me pretty soon. I'm not sure why the nose cone is gone. Just this part. Um, it looks pretty good shape. I'm pretty sure this is a DC model. That's a bit loose. There's, there's probably a screw underneath there that needs to be tightened. Uh, I don't want to We'll figure this out here. It's not that big of a deal. But anyway, this is uh, this, this is the second version. This is an ICE-2. But the only thing I can tell the difference between the ICE-2, at least externally, is that the ICE-2 has a passenger compartment and the trailing locomotive, whereas the ICE-1 both looks, they both look like this. They're both solid. I have a Fleischmann ICE-1. I don't have an ICE-2, and you now I have one. I'm pretty sure the one thing about this Rocco set is it's HO scale in a sense that width-wise it's 187, but length-wise it's 1100. And I notice they do this in Europe, particularly with their entry and intermediate level sets, so that they'll run on smaller curves. I guess they assume that people who purchase these will won't have as much room because they won't have a permanent layout. So they run on uh, some tighter radii. So let's see, has this got traction tires? Yeah, it's a European thing to have traction tires. Now they seem to use them more than we do. Let's see. Let's... Well, I can hear the motor. Here, don't hear it driving. There's there a chance that it's DCC and it's just not getting enough voltage? Hmm, not sure here. Maybe that pantograph screw come down and jam the motor? from the pantograph. Okay, so there's the interior of it. It has a eight pin plug, just for some reason isn't. So it doesn't have a DCC controller in it. So, oh, there it goes. It's running really well. I just had some just had some stitching. Not sure what was going on, but it's working fine now. an operative pantograph if you want to go that route and it looks like I gotta say it goes runs backwards like this well that's the way I'll put it on for now all right so I've got to get a screw to screw back into there and through this piece so I will be right back I realized, it's gonna sound kind of weird, but I realized actually it'd be better 
if I replace the pantograph entirely. The screw is so small it needs to go into it. And I am actually going to replace it with a new pantograph. So these are nice. I think I bought this off of Alibaba or something like that. And I think it's a little bit more robust than the one that's on there. So I'm gonna pull that off and it's going to force me to re-drill the holes real quick, isn't it? Well, that's not the best option then. That's a bummer. All right, well, I don't have a screw for this, so I'm gonna to have to continue to hunt for it. But for now, hmm, I wonder if there's any way for me to modify this so that I don't have to. No, I don't think so. Hmm, perplexing. Okay, well, I will figure this out and I will get back to you on it. But either way, it's nice ice too. Looks like it works. I'm not gonna put the shell back on until I get this pantograph issue resolved. But there we go. All right, everyone, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this. As always, stay safe, take care, happy model railroading.